Hello, I'm Remy. And I'm Beth. And this is Brother Knows Quest, the podcast where I, your host, introduce my sister to the wonderful world of tabletop role-playing games. Beth, do you know what we're talking about today? I don't know why you keep asking. It's just kind of in my head now. I say it kind of like the intro thing. Oh. But do you know? No. Okay, this. Oh, look. I got a big, heavy box. A really heavy box. So there's three different books in here. Four different. Three? Four? I think it's three. One of them's actually a kit to do something else. Okay. What is it? It's, um, I don't know. I think I've got it backwards. And it's really heavy to move. Rune Quest. Yes. Role playing in Galarantha. It's another one of the basic role playing uh, engine games. Kind of like Call of Cthulhu. I do believe this one came first. And then you had Call of Cthulhu. D100s use uh, skills. You roll under whatever your percentage is in your skill. And that's how you do things. Listen to our Call of Cthulhu one if you want to go over that part more. Can you see something, anything interesting about that book or those books you got there? I don't know. I have to move things around so that I can fit them and ah. actually look at them. This is another one I haven't played, so it's not a review, more like a discussion about the cool setting and uh, not as much about the mechanics. I will say straight up, this isn't a class-based game. You kind of build a character and the skills you end up using the most are the ones that improve. So uh, you role play the way you want. You, of course, you can build it has options for character building. It ain't just everybody starts off as a blank slate, but I'll, I'll get the starter set here. I'll talk about that uh, in a moment. Another interesting thing about the starter set, uh, from what I've read, since I haven't played it, I don't know for sure, from what I've read and seen on different YouTube channels and all that, it, they make a lot of their modules, like their campaigns and stuff for the game. They would just work with the starter set. You don't actually ha absolutely have to have that book you got there to play. You can't just start off with the starter set, which is a nice. <laughs> but that's just what I heard. Don't take my word for it. But I've seen it more than one place. So it's a flat earth. It's very Greek, uh, Byzantine, Bronze Age kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But flat earth. Uh, what you <laughs> see in there, Just I'm trying to find a character sheet to hand you out of this. So you get an idea what characters are like. Uh, remember I was trying to explain them to you last year or uh, in the last episode. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll give you, oh, who is this? I, I'm pretty sure that's Mulan. Mulan? No, Mulan is with a U. That's Milan. Okay, it's Milan. But that's how their character sheets are set up. Let me get one out of here so I can compare it myself. <clears throat> the I'll tell you how many come in the starter set. It this is has called some adult images. In it does. This book. It does. Mm -hmm. You in this you have a clan, a family trait kind of thing. Then you have a cult because there's so many different gods, kind of like you know Greek mm -hmm. stuff. And then you have runes, which are a type of magic and different powers depending on what you like: uh, fertility, harmony, truth, status, uh, movement, illusion, disorder, death, and beast. But as for your um, runes, you have elemental affinities. You have fire, air, moon, earth, water, and darkness. And there's, it's pretty interesting. Also, your armor does not, um, kind of like we mentioned earlier in the basic roleplay cover, um, does not just count towards your hit like D&D. They don't hit you if they can't get past your armor. In this, they don't damage you if they can't get past your armor, but they still hit. And each section of your body has different armor classes. Like the character sheet I'm looking at here, she has Pretty much no H or AP anywhere, but she does have HP for every like abdomen, left leg, right leg, right arm, left arm, head, chest. Uh, they all have armor like that. And, but of course, I just got one that didn't happen to have any armor anywhere. The skills go like agility, communication, knowledge, and they have sub skills like dance under communication, sing, uh, different types of speak, different languages, perception, stealth, manipulation, and magic. Under ma magic, there is meditation, spirit combat, and worship, which makes sense. It's a good place to put it, especially in a world full of gods. Uh, it's also like basic role playing, since they're so similar. Um, very deadly. You will try to not get into combat in, in the average game. You'll try to find a sneakier way to get around it. A lot of times, that's how the like the Iliad and all that went. Uh, a lot of tricky maneuvers done to. I think the only one who really didn't outsmart everybody was Hercules, who. Uh, Kind of brute forced his way through a lot of things. Mm. But then you had, uh, what's his name? Odysseus, who tricked folks during his long sea voyage more than he actually fought outright with them. i got to open another book. You want to see some other characters while I'm doing this? I don't know if yours is very exciting. Um, I don't know. I'm still going through the first book. Oh, the well, big, like a book or the... <laughs> it, it's one of the most flushed out worlds ever because he worked on it for so long. There's so much stuff for this. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing, it might have more modules for it is Call of Cthulhu because people just love that. RuneQuest is kind of overlooked compared to Call of Cthulhu, but it's an alternative alternative to D&D &D if you want something just complex enough uh, to make it similar. I do like the way it plays 
from what I've watched, <laughs> better just because the way the percentile dice work, the skills you use uh, increase as you use them and do well. So your best stat will continue to be your best stat unless you intentionally go out of your way to better something and use it more. This man has a donkey. <laughs> it just says riding horse. Aranda, I think is his name. Or her. Her name, sorry. I just turned over the cover art. Um, and it, or the last one's name was, it just says riding horse because Aranda also has a horse, apparently. A lot of animals, actually, in a lot of these. Does your character have an animal? Uh, yeah, I have a bison. Okay, they, they all have something. This one has a fire elemental. Mine's a cute little bison. Either oh, this there, guy has she's a, very big. A monkey. This one has a monkey. There are so many character sheets here. I want to hand you these because it'll give you an idea what kind of things you can play. Here you go. Now, I gave Bethy the core box. There's a bestiary. Am I wrong? Yeah. Okay, and then there's the core rule book, and then there's the GM screen and other stuff. It probably comes with a couple of modules. I didn't open it, and I got to look, and I don't have the PDF for this. So I'm, I'm kind of going blind here, but just a starter set I got in my hand uh, because I normally just read the PDF after I buy something, but I didn't have the PDF, so I didn't feel like opening something. I'll let you have that honor. I don't think this is considered a pet, considering it's a wolf pelt. Ah, kind of like Hercules at the lion pelt. Mm-hmm. Cousin monkey. Is that what they said? Mm-hmm. I didn't even read it. I've seen monkey. Uh, how do you like the art in the books, by the way? The art is very nice. It's colorful, and it's kind of like Chinese-y, I guess you would say. Okay. It, it, that's probably not how you say that. <laughs> Obviously, chinese but... When it comes to spells and stuff, you have spells like Analyze Magic, Arouse Passion. It adds 20% to a target's passion, which is the thing we covered, we talked about just a little bit. Oh, as my, one of the, it's some, a little pony. Mm-hmm. What other runes are there? Heal Body, there's healing spells, strong healing spells, but you don't always have access to them. Like I said, it's a very deadly game. You can leave, lose limbs in combat in this. You have a lot of options when it comes to character building because of all these different uh, lineages, not lineages, family history, background. Since you have that book, I really can't tell you. But Glorantha is really the beautiful setting here. It's it's so in depth, and there's so much. They tried taking it out of Glorantha for a while uh, when they made one version of the game, and it just didn't stick. So they they stuck it back in this world. But you can play it in any other setting you want. I don't know why you'd want to if something this cool. The Greeks really had a lot of things. It's it's a whole world of mythology, not just D and D style where you kind of get a bunch of them mixed together. But you kind of got one major setting and a few. Of the surrounding areas from the Mediterranean, I suppose. Mostly it's a Mediterranean-style mythology. Some weird things do pop up. Anything you come across is probably going to be more dangerous than you. That's that's the hard part to get around if you're not into that. Uh, you still are heroic. And your characters, they are bound together more than D&D. In D&D, you have people stabbing you in the back in your own party if you're not careful. Uh, stuff like that. This, uh, it's more... You could have people who used to be enemies working together, and it is important that they actually work together in the game. You will all set out to stop what is kind of like their version of the end of the world, and you all are want to take part in that big battle, so you all are working together to that end to be good enough to do that. Let me see uh, on the back here how much I pay for the starter set, because if you are interested in this, I'll put links to DriveThruRPG in the description. There'll be affiliate links. Uh, they'll only be PDFs, because I don't think they sell physical print of these. Mermaids. Um, the MSRP on the back of this is twenty nine ninety nine on the uh, starter set. What does the box say about the MSRP on the back? Do you know? I don't know. What am I looking for? The MSRP. What's that? The price, Bethy. Oh, one hundred twenty dollars. Okay, but for what you got there in your hand, do you think it's worth it? Uh, yeah, that's a lot of information and, and you get paperwork the, yeah, I've got here. Like I said, I would start off with the starter set because how many character sheets do you have there? Pre made characters. I need. To, I should say that it's about. 11 or 12. Okay. And there is some blank ones here if you want to build your own. Uh, a couple old two or three blank ones. And it's got a map of Glorantha. Here, let me just read to you what's on the box real quick. What's in the box? It comes with book one is the rules. Uh, book two is the world of Glorantha. Book three is the solo quest. Book four is the adventures, which it comes with three adventures. A rough landing, a fire in the darkness, and the rainbow mounds. Ready-made adventurers, there is 14. And blank adventures sheet is two. I was wrong about the three. Uh, there's handouts for the quests. There's map. And there's uh, dice, of course, which aren't in my box set because Scott seen the color of them and took them. They look like, <laughs> hey, they're like amber. Oh. It gives you a little role playing in Glorantha. Read me first stuff. And it tells you what as a player you shouldn't open and what as the GM you should open. Let me pull out the rules here real quick and refresh a little bit of what I remember. There's dragon snails. It also comes with a solo quest. 
if you want to try and play this by yourself to get used to the game. Uh, it walks you through step by step the quest. It just gets you kind of, if you want to hand it off to each player mm-hmm. when they have some free time to learn the game better. Now, what did you say? There's dragons, what? Dragon snails. They're big snails. Oh, snails. I thought you said tails. Oh, wait, that's just one snail with two heads. It's a hydra snail. In the rules, it comes with a nice chart in the beginning, ability test tables, uh, so you know how to use your D100s, uh, resistance tables if something's resisting your, uh, you know, well, you know what resistance is if you played a, t- a tabletop game. Somebody's trying to resist your, uh, what you're doing or fight you off. Uh, skills, how to use them. We covered that in basic roleplay in Call of Cthulhu. There's uh, dinosaurs in this too. It has a description for each communication skill. The rules themselves, uh, the page count is 61 in the little starter book. And it comes with a few of the spells. Like I said, create. Oh, you can create a market. I've never even seen that. It's a ritual. It, it, it creates a neutral trading ground in a twi- 10 meter square. You don't get stuff like that in D&D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess you can mod it in, but this has it built in, in the starter set. A lot of the art is uh, kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, yeah, I didn't either. Um, some of it is like you get in Greek art, where like the murals and the vases, or vases if you want, like the wrestling and the heroic acts that someone did on the side of a vase. Think of the sh- cartoon Hercules, the women on the vase, the singers. What were they? <laughs> the muses. It covers how to handle chases, sorcery, all the normal stuff. Uh, and you can have a wide variety of characters, and they're just designed to where you work together. Oh, I better not go into adventure. That would be wrong. But I, I have uh, another book for this in there, and it covers the world itself. It's like the newest version of that book uh, that comes out for every generation of game. Oh, here's how you do this in this world. It also has the most updated ones, so that's more useful. I don't think I'll add that in there, because if you get the, the starter set or the box set, that'll be plenty to start with. I can't recommend you just jump headlong into the 120 some dollar box set. Grab the little $30 starter set when you want, if you are interested. If you like the idea of a Bronze Age Greek kind of uh, Greek, Trojan yes. War or hero, or it has a whole lot more setting in the world. I normally talk about settings, but Glorantha is huge, and it's so. I'd be here for a long time trying to catch you up on mm-hmm. the world of Glor- <laughs> Glorantha. Uh, watch some videos about it. What kind of person am I when I try to tell you to? Uh, let me tell you about this, but maybe you should watch something instead. That's not what I'm trying to say, but mm-hmm. I can't tell you about the art through podcast that's the problem here Uh, um when i said chinese i don't i was probably looking at that adult image i was talking about when i said it but um and it kind of reminded me of like a buddha thing Mm -hmm. well yeah there's different there's different deities they don't all come across as greek or yeah but greek is definitely the mythology i can't yeah it feels great it could be a little persian you just think of the trojan war stuff like that and you get the idea what these people look like i haven't seen the headdress things you see on the spartans or the thongs you get in that one spartan (laughs) (laughs) movie it's got the robes yeah uh, or togas is that what they're called i believe that's what they're called yes but the combat like i said is is, is awesome the role-playing opportunities is great you get your cult and you have abilities you try to stick to what your uh, deity is known for when it comes to role playing. Uh, you can make deities mad, like the Greeks did it all the time. Probably shouldn't do that to kind of intervene in certain ways. And you just go around trying to be your best hero. There's different things. It ain't all like epic fantasy. You're not all going to go out and you don't have to role play it that way. There's ways, and not just ways that's encouraged, smaller adventures, kind of like you would as a beginning D&D player, uh, level one party. That kind of stuff is perfectly acceptable here. Um, you also have, you know, more human enemies, which also could be just as epic in its own way. Large battles, you get your cool magics you can do. What? After three battles on your first day out, you might lose an arm or a leg, and then you have to adapt and go from there. That's something you don't get in D&D, unless you're role-playing it real hard and modding the rules, which I'm not big into modding things. I don't like homebrew as much. I will, like a fantasy setting, I will homebrew a setting for myself, but I won't change the way the rules work because of it. I'll find another game that does that instead. Mm. Somebody else to put all the work into it. I'm not doing it, which is why I've got into this hobby of collecting so many games. <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh, that'd be cool to play that way. And my friends, Dakota, you'll say, ah, oh, I, I think like there's a way. I like how you say friends and then just Dakota. <laughs> well, uh, my friends, I had another one who played a lot, but 
I haven't heard from him in a while when it comes to playing games. But Dakota, he's always talked about, I think there's a way to get D&D to do this and play it this way. I'm like, just play a game that's already made to do it that way. And I just don't like homebrew that way. I'm making a lot of people mad. D&D is built on the homebrew thing. And yes, I was up in arms when Wizards was trying to keep homebrew and make you pay to do it, pretty much. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I was. That's an exaggeration just a little bit, but not by far. But, but uh, <laughs> I'm just not into the kind of thing myself. I'd rather be able to open a book and have a print copy. If, yeah. I, if I don't know the rule and I have to go back to my old written notes in my old beat up core rule book that I had to remember my old homebrew rules, mm-hmm. I can't just go out and buy another book to replace it. I have to do it all again. No, I'll just keep the rules as written. Thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that uh, was pretty much like they're, hey, you buy our stuff and then we're going to make you subscribe pretty much to be able to play it. Oh, they've announced a new subscription plan today. <laughs> yeah, no. If I purchase, I'm a one time purchase, even if it's an uh, app. That's why, well, also Good Notes is better, but um, that's why I chose Good Notes over Notability mm-hmm. on my iPad because Notability didn't have the option for a one time purchase. I'm not paying you, you a monthly fee to use a notebook. I agree. <laughs> oh, we have veered right off the subject here. <laughs> well, I'm just, that was my example of I'm understand. not paying a subscription for something like that. I, I completely agree. As for us, when it comes to role playing, if we're not doing it in person, we're doing it on Roll Twenty, which covers a wide variety of systems. I will not be getting a D and D Beyond subscription just for that because I have other things I like to play. It don't make sense to have D and D Beyond, even if they got their cool new tabletop. Uh, especially thing. in this economy, there's no reason to be paying a monthly or yearly fee for something like that. Here's two of the character sheets I didn't see. Here, completely veered off the subject again, and I found some character sheets. What okay. are those? What are their creatures? This one has a pet rock. <laughs> earth, uh, earth elemental i guess yes uh that's what it looks like to me some sort of mountain rock zebras this one's got zebras two, two little zebras okay <laughs> are the characters just for my own idea are the characters really that large or are the is the art just not proportional because these are little mini zebras I, they might very well be mini zebras. <laughs> I didn't look in the, see, I haven't opened the core set, which is what you have over there. And I'm pretty sure there's creatures, I, be, I guess they'd be in this book too, since they're in the starter set. But, um, Just like the horse was a lot smaller and the rock's a lot small. I suspect they're smaller. The snake is proportional to um this person, which doesn't have a name on it, let's oddly say, enough. Let's just say they're not a normal breed of creature then. Here, look at the art on the box cover. Look at the creature on that. Hey, I seen that in the book I was flip one of these books I was flipping through. I expected you to like go through the bestiary style book. What is it called for the Glorantha books? Uh, beast, beast, bestiary. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you had trouble saying that. Okay. Oh, no, the book is upside down, so I was having to turn my head. Okay. Well, yeah, the core set comes with the core book, which is, what is it called? Just ro- RuneQuest. Uh, Role playing in Glorantha? Glorantha. Okay, and then oh. you have uh, the bestiary, and then you have the GM kit, which comes with the GM screen, and a couple of, I do believe, other, uh, usually there's come of an adventure or two, and a few extra goodies. The creature on this cover that I mentioned I happened to see in the book I was looking at, Yeah, it reminds me of one of the creatures on the movie Evolution. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you watch that movie, that does look a lot like the four-legged one, I guess, the I don't really know how to explain it. It's like a circle with a few arms and legs that's the same color green and a huge mouth. With uh, a bunch of teeth. A lot of teeth, yes. Layers and layers and a big tongue that's whipping around. Yeah. I, I, now, characters don't just have their magic. They have abilities. Now, I do wonder if she's not using an ability. She's got something shocking on her arm. Yeah. This is our last basic role-playing thing. I, I will cover another game probably next week about... The whole Greek theme, but it's a lot smaller book. Look up some lore on Glorantha if you're interested in the idea of a Greek-style D&D game or a Mediterranean Bronze Age thing. I fell in love with the artwork in it, and then I couldn't find anybody to play it, so I only went so far into reading about it, unfortunately, but I didn't want to veer off of the basic role-playing system until I finished them all. But just get the starter set. Look at the starter set. Like I said, the link will be down there in the description. Watch some reviews about it. There's a lot of cool ones that go into exactly how well people have said this is one of the best starter sets they've ever seen and i agree there's a lot of content in this and it's so well made it isn't like the D ones or the other starter sets you get uh chaosium is really good about their starter sets i'm pretty sure this one came out in 2021 is uh but i didn't get it until last year 
um, what are, it's like, it's like a thick piece of cardboard. Um, nothing really malleable about it at all. Flexible. And you come with so many cool things. And then if you like the starter set, grab the big expensive box that Buffy's got over there. What is it called? Does it say anything on the back of the box, like about the title of it? I already read that. It's just called RuneQuest. Uh, box set i guess <laughs> awfully heavy and you keep making me pick it up <laughs> rune quest role playing in glorantha okay uh if you want a physical copy you can find it anywhere i'm pretty sure i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm pretty sure if you get it on chaosium which you have to pay shipping and stuff i do believe on most orders i did uh you have to pay for that and then you get the pdf as well as the print but i'm not 100 percent sure about that but if you get through Amazon, you don't get that. But it's probably a little bit cheaper to get shipped to you and everything. And if you just want the PDF, drive through RPG with that link I got down at the bottom is the best bet there. Uh, let's see. I can't think of anything else really to say. Uh, would you play this? Yeah. I figured you would. It's a little bit easier to play. Like I said, I can't explain how I play Call of Cthulhu, but it's very similar when it comes to the way things are done. Uh, it's the D100. You roll under your stat and you go. The rules are not as crunchy in the long run as D&D, if you ask me, because I remember that being a very quick and easy game I played compared to the D&D games we play, even with combat involved. And in, in, in Call of Cthulhu, when he's playing, combat is deadly. It's like as deadly as it ever gets for any game. You're a human fighting a cosmic monstrosity of some sort. In this, it's uh, a little bit more fair, even if it is deadly. Okay, well, we might try to find somebody to play this soon. I know Dakota was interested in it, when I first got it, before he got real busy with everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're having to get busy, too, because our bills are behind and we're having to go out and work. Yeah, yeah. I've been, so there's a lot less time for Yeah. trying to do things like this. Yeah, I, well, that's, that's part of the reason I didn't get up on the, uh, <laughs> the books I was expecting to. There's a lot to read there, if you haven't noticed. Yeah. Uh, I covered the starter set as best. Uh, I didn't want to cover any of the modules, the adventures, because... That's spoiler territory, and I'd rather not have to drive people away. For the people who have used the affiliate links, thank you. They are helping uh, with the RPG purchases and stuff. We do appreciate that. Thanks for any of the reviews we get. We've seen a few. We are compiling them to do shoutouts now. It's not as easy as it sounds because there's so many apps to go through. I guess that's it for this. I don't really know what else to say besides look into it. Look at, I told you everything in it. Uh, I told you the setting about the setting. I can't go into everything in the setting because it is huge. There's cities, of course. You get city-state style things going on. Fantastic creatures. Good characters. I'm, they're a little bit harder to make, kind of like the basic role-playing things are until you get used to it. It's just an inherent part of the game. A little bit, not counterintuitive, just a little bit more, a little bit more math involved than you're used to compared to D&D. But it's a great fantasy setting. I, I can't really think of a setting, particular setting. I would like more when it comes to fantasy. I like the Forgotten Realms from D&D, and I like Godforsaken from uh, Cypher System, Gods of the Fall. And I like the setting in, um, what's it called? Uh, well, I haven't covered that yet, so I won't, I won't actually mention it. But uh, when it comes to this, I love this setting, just because it's there's not very many that do the Bronze Age Greek thing. Even if it ain't necessarily Greek, it's inspired by, just by looking at it, you could tell. Then the gods aren't the same gods. You don't run into Zeus and stuff like that. You run into other deities, but they're very similar. I need to say that as well. I didn't want to give you the wrong impression. You pick up a book and you're like, where's Zeus and uh, Hades? <laughs> that's not there. At least the names are more pronounceable than you get in D&D. Yeah. That's good. Which I want, I want to start mentioning that. How easy it is to pronounce the names in the modules. Because <laughs> that's a big deal for us. Me and you struggle with names. Yeah. That's important. It's just the way we are. Okay. Well, you have any final thoughts? No. Okay. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, if you like what you heard here, we're part of the Gruesome Gaming Group Podcast Network. Uh, there'll be a link in the description, along with that affiliate link for the uh, PDFs for this on the RPG. There will be a link tree link, which will take you to all of our socials. We have Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, and all these episodes also go up on YouTube if you're not listening on YouTube now. You can... Uh, Leave a review if you like. We'd appreciate it. Let us know what you think. Email us. There'll be an email to get a hold of me or just reach out through one of the uh, media, one of the social apps in that link tree. The first link in that link tree will also be a, uh, our homepage for our web, for our podcast network. It'll have all of our other podcasts. We have Horrific History and Hauntings. It's a podcast where my sister here tells me about everything in the title. Horrific History. Uh, sometimes we'll cover true crime. Uh, a big disaster that's happened. Uh, sometimes we'll cover hauntings and other things like that. Um, it'll be clear which ones are 
uh, based on fact and which ones aren't <laughs> because uh we can't promise the hauntings are real but we can promise the tsunami that hit japan is real yeah that kind of stuff <laughs> Uh, there's also one called Leveling Duo. It's a podcast to me and my friend Dakota and me and Beth here do, and we talk about video games we enjoy. And it's it's more sporadic because we don't play as many video games as we uh, could because we're we're kind of busy these days. But I I do still like to talk about older games I played or a new one that's came out that I really enjoy. And so that works out. I kind of had an idea to do one on Hell Divers, and Beth she can't do many. She can listen because she don't play nothing but Sims. I play Left 4 Dead, but it's on my Xbox 360. Yeah, it's also on my PC. One and two. Two's the best. Yeah. Okay. Also, I'll say if you use any of the affiliate link in the description, it will go towards buying other RPGs with store credit. We don't cash that out. I promised that for a long time and we'll stick to it unless there's just like an absurd amount of buys and then I'll let you know that too much money to buy. That'd be nice to see, but I don't see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to put towards the hosting fee. Yeah, or... we do pay hosting fees for these podcasts. Well, it's not expensive. It's just, it, it's a it, recurring compounding the... thing. <laughs> yeah, it's... The financial positions that we're in at the moment is... Reasonable people would say just stop doing it, but I kind of enjoy doing it. This so is we're the not one just, thing in my life that I actually look forward to and I enjoy. No, I'm not going to stop doing it. Yeah. We're not saying that we're going to stop if you don't. We're just saying that it would help if you... But like I said, the people who are using the drive through RPG thing, it's helping me keep from having to actually pay cash for some of the stuff I talk about. Yeah. I will use some of that to buy the PDFs for this book that I've already covered because I like to have the PDFs for everything. But uh, unless you send me a, requ- a recommendation, something that I haven't got, uh, let me know. You send an email to the email or reach out on a social link. We'll take input. Again, don't feel like we know how hard it is for everybody. We're not begging for money. We're just saying that it goes to help if you yeah. buy something. Help, let us know. There'll be a link in there to donate, a little tip, we call it, if you want to do that. Secure. You don't have to worry about your car getting stolen or anything. Yeah, we don't have access to that type of information. No, all we see is a note you leave and the uh, amount you've left, and we'd appreciate it if you did do it. You don't don't feel like obligated to, but thank you if you do. Uh, and if you want us to read out a comment you leave, let us know. Or actually, let us know if you don't want us to. We tend to read the ones that come out if they unless they say otherwise. And thanks for the reviews we already got. Once we get a few, we'll make an episode just thanking folks and uh, talking about them. even the bad ones. I mean, why not? I can accept criticism. Thank you for listening. I've been Ramey. I'm not Beth. Bye-bye.